my strength this hour, Jesus. You're my deliverer, yes, you are, Jesus. The goodness of Jesus. I'm Vivian Brown. Thank you so very much for joining us today. We're going to open up with a prayer, of course, and we're going to dive right into the word for today. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to come to you this day just to say thank you. So often, Father, we come to you and we ask for this and we ask for that and we take so many different things you do for us for granted. So this day, Father, we just want a little bit of your time just to say thank you. We thank you for the food you put on our tables each and every day. Father, we thank you for the shelter you place over our heads. Father, we thank you for getting us from point A to point B. Father, we thank you for the clothes you put on our backs. Father, we want to just say thank you, Father. We thank you for the angels that you send us to watch over us day in and day out. Father, we thank you for your mercy on one side and your grace on the other side that surrounds us each and every day. Father, we just want to say thank you. We thank you for your darling son. We ultimately want to thank you for your darling son who died on the cross for us, Father. Father, we just want to say thank you. Father, we thank you for this channel this day, Father, and I thank you for each and every person that is viewing this video this day. Father, we just want to say thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, we're going to dive right into the word today. I decided to title this Bible study, Have You Given Satan a Welcome Mat into Your Life? Have you given Satan a welcome mat into your life? Well, we're going to go ahead and dive into our scripture because I want us to learn a little bit more about Satan. And there are so many different scriptures to kind of give us some background information on him. Let's begin with our first scripture. It is Revelation chapter 12 verses 9 through 11. It reads, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. We're going to keep it moving. Let's jump into John chapter 8, verse 44. It reads, You are of your father, the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. Wow, well, we know he most definitely is a liar. Let's keep it moving. Let's go right to 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Wow. Let's keep it moving. Let's go right to John chapter 10 verse 10. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Well, we know that he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And of course, Jesus is the total opposite. He comes to give us life and life more abundantly. A couple more verses. 1 John uh, chapter 3, verse 8, it reads, He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of 
the devil. Now, that's amazing. Of course, we know that that's why Jesus came down. He came down to undo everything that Satan did. And it says it right here. So let's keep it moving. Let's go to Matthew chapter 13, verse 19. It reads, When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. That this is he which received seed by the wayside. And last one, Luke chapter 4, verse 13, it reads, And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he de departed from him for a season. Now, that was a lot of background information on Satan, but I felt it was necessary. I did take a couple of notes. One of the things I wanted to, that I, I wrote down was that he knows when and where we are especially vulnerable to his attacks. That lets me know, of course, that he, from these scriptures I gathered, that he watches us all the time. He knows when he needs to depart from us as he did uh, Jesus, and he knows when you are weak, when you are vulnerable, as he did Jesus. And of course, if he's going to do Jesus that way, you know he's going to do us the exact same way. Now, have you ever been praying and um, you were focused this way, but then you found yourself thinking over here or thinking on this side and you were just kind of all over the place, but you were supposed to be focused. Well, that's a great example that Satan will do whatever it is, it is that he needs to do to pull us away from the grace of God. Of course, he doesn't want us praying. Of course, he doesn't want us uh, praising God or worshiping God or, or meditating. He doesn't want us to do all these things. So he's going to do whatever it is that he needs to do to pull us away. Now, how do you give Satan a welcome mat into your lives? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. Let me give you a couple of examples. Let's just say that you are a drinker, not maybe not a heavy drinker, but just a drinker. But you know that when you drink too much, that you normally do things that you wouldn't normally do had you not had all of that to drink. Well, when you drink too much, you give Satan a welcome mat into your life. When you drink too much, you give Satan a welcome mat into your life. Another great example is a co-worker. Let's say you are a male and um, there is this co-worker that you know is very, very sweet on you. Of course, she is a female and you are married. Well, you are having problems at home and you decide that you want a female's perspective on what's going on. So you want to share. Okay, you can call your mama, but you decide you want to share with this young lady that is sweet on you that, you, and you also think she's cute. And you say, well, let me just take her to lunch. I mean, it's not really a date or anything like that. We just gotta hang out for lunch so I can chit chat with her. You have just given Satan a welcome mat into your life. One thing can lead to the other, and there you go. He knows how to tempt us. He knows where we're weak. He knows where we're vulnerable. Do not give Satan a welcome mat into your lives. Another one that may be subtle. Let's say you are a person, say, I live my life. I like to have a good time. And um, you make plenty of money on your job. You have the finest car. You have the finest things in your home. And you just like to party and spin, spin, spin. Well, one problem you have, you don't like to save. You don't even like to tithe. You just gave Satan a welcome mat into your life. What happens when you lose your job? One day you lose your job and you have absolutely nothing to fall back on. Now let me make this thing real. Let me uh, bring it to life for you. Um, there's this movie uh, that I know plenty of people have seen that um, I truly believe that you would be able to identify exactly where this couple um, gave Satan a welcome mat into their lives. 
We'll be right back. Take a look at this. You have something that I just don't have. Well, I guess there's limits to what money can buy. Not many. Some things aren't for sale. Such as? Well, you can't buy people. That's naive, Diana. I buy people every day. Oh, well, in business, maybe, but not when real emotions are involved. So what are you saying? You can't buy love? That's a bit of a cliché, don't you think? It's absolutely true. Is it? What do you think? I agree with Diana. You do? Well, let's test the cliché. Suppose I were to offer you one million dollars for one night with your wife. I'd assume you're kidding. Let's pretend I'm not. What would you say? He'd tell you to go to hell. I didn't hear him. I tell you to go to hell. That's a reflex answer because you view it as hypothetical. But let's say that there were real money behind it. I'm not kidding. Million dollars. You know, the night would come and go, but the money could last a lifetime. Think of it. A million dollars. A lifetime of security. For one night. And don't answer right away. But consider it. Now, did you see that? Now, all my ladies out there, I know you like, no, he didn't. When did he give Satan a welcome mat into his life? You guessed it. When that man gave him that indecent proposal, did you see his face? He allowed Satan to see that he was entertaining that thought. That was when he gave Satan his welcome mat. But he didn't stop there. That thought that he had, he didn't stop there. Take a look at, look at this. Mr. Green, uh, David Murphy would like to speak to you. He says it's urgent. Ooh, uh, put him on the speaker. This is an old college buddy. Might only take a second. Jeremy? Davey, I'm in the middle of a meeting. What's up? Well, listen, um, we need you to close a deal. Ooh, what kind of deal? A big deal, very big deal. Ooh, big deal. Go on. We're in, in, in Vegas at the Hilton. Uh, we met John Gage. You know who he is? Sure I know who he is. He's a billionaire and a, uh, a major poon hound. Yes. Mm-hmm. Go on. He offered us a million dollars. Million dollars? For what? Your kidneys? For one night with Diane. What do you mean? One night? Like... Yes. Could you excuse me for a second? Let me get this straight. Um, he offered you a million dollars for a night with your wife? As in your wife, Diana? And you agreed to it? I don't know what to say. I mean, how could you do something like that? How could you negotiate without me? Never negotiate without your lawyer. Never! For a woman like Diana could have gotten you at least two million. He went as far as to call his lawyer. He wanted to make sure that this thing would be legit. He came in and sent his wife out there to make him some money. That is crazy. That is crazy. Whew. So, he entertained the thought, and then he took it even further. Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And that was exactly what he was trying to do with that marriage. He almost succeeded, too. 
but they came back at the end. Of course, you know that story. But I wanted to bring that up to you because that's something that happens. Um, we may not get a pro indecent proposal that way, of course, in our everyday lives. But we, Satan, when he finds out our weaknesses, he most definitely gives us proposals. And it's up to us to make the decisions as to whether or not we're going to go ahead and welcome him on in or if we're going to um, make sure that we exclude him from our lives. Now, of course, you may be asking, um, how can you resist him? I'm so very glad you asked how you can resist him. Well, I've already pulled, of course, a couple of uh, a couple of scriptures for you. The first one is James chapter four, verse seven and eight. It reads, "Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded." So we must, first of all, acknowledge our sin before God and we must repent and turn away from them. If we do not repent and turn away from our sins, we continuously allow Satan to have authority in our lives. If we don't repent and acknowledge to God our sins, then we continuously give Satan the influence in our lives each and every day. The second scripture I want to read is Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 through verses 12. It reads, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So it tells us to put on the whole armor of God. And the only way we can do that, I knew you knew I was going here. The only way we can do that is right here. To put on the whole armor of God. Now, remember what I said before. Five minutes. Give him five minutes. If you take a couple of minutes to pray, take a minute to worship, take a minute to praise him, take a minute to meditate, and just listen. Listen for what he wants you to do for your day. Take a minute to do that. Give yourself five minutes with him when you wake up in the morning. Listen to what he has to say. If, he, if you don't hear him speak right away, it's okay. Wait until, continue to do the same thing, and I guarantee you, you will start hearing him. He will start directing your day. He will start directing your path. Don't you move until he moves. Don't you speak until he speaks. I guarantee you, your days will change. You will have much better days. That armor of God, meditating, praising God, worshiping, reading his, staying in his word, I guarantee you if you do it, you will most definitely be able to resist Satan. He will most definitely have to flee from you if you do these things and be sincere about it. Amen? Amen today. We thank God for sending his only begotten son, Jesus. Whomever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Until next time, you be blessed.